gentleman has calcium deposits adherent to the posterior surface of his silicone lens implant. He had cataract surgery with a lens implant. This is an AMO SI30 silicone lens implant, the three-piece lens. It was placed in 2004. He came in and I did a YAG capsulotomy on his eye maybe about two years ago and he just had persistent uh, calcium uh, that was inherent to the posterior surface of the lens and uh, interestingly he has asteroid hylosis in the vitreous and I think it's the calcium from the asteroid that was inherent to this type of silicone lens so because he noticed the glare and foggy vision from this deposit we elected to do a lens exchange the plan here was to take out a silicone lens and exchange it for an acrylic lens so we're doing this under topical anesthetic we fill the eye with uh, in this case Helon GV we try and separate the anterior capsule leaflet from the lens surface uh, I try several different instruments to get an idea of how fibrosed in this lens is to the capsular bag. Keep in mind he does have an open posterior capsule from a prior YAG, YAG capsulotomy done two years ago. He's now seven years after uh, cataract surgery with this lens implant. But because these haptics are smooth, a lot of times we can just free the adhesions to the haptics and spin the lens out of the capsular bag and that was the plan here. So here I'm just trying to rotate the lens and free up the adhesions and then I get a, a different instrument. I believe this instrument is a Lester pressure. I rotate the lens clockwise and it frees up the adhesions on both the haptic that I'm working on and the other haptic 180 degrees away. So I'm able to manipulate the lens and lift one haptic into the anterior chamber. The nice property of these three-piece lenses is that the design of the haptic allows them to be rotated out of the capsular bag without necessarily doing damage to the capsular bag because the smooth of this haptic uh, prevents the capsular bag from scarring around that haptic free tendon so it can't be released. So I know I'm pretty much home free because I've been able to rotate the lens three clock hours free of one haptic. All I've got to do is rotate the lens again, find the other haptic, and rotate it out of the bag. at our Austin Eye Laser and Surgery Center. The patient is uh, just been done with topical anesthetic only. They've done the tracamoral anesthetic. He's very comfortable and he's received 10 milligrams of full Valium. cyclodialysis of action we're going to spin the lens out and uh, it reminds me of uh, changing a, uh, uh, a bicycle tire a flat on a bicycle tire where you can just spin the lens out of the bag now we've got the lens out of the bag expect there is going to be vitreous presenting itself in the anterior chamber. We take our acrylic lens here. It's a Sensar AR40 lens. It's made of acrylic. And before I take the silicone lens out, I'm going to go ahead and insert this acrylic lens into the eye, into the sulcus.
Dev Campus and Private Practice in Los Angeles, California. But he introduced this concept where uh, you introduce the replacement IOL before you remove the first lens. place this acrylic lens gently into the ciliary body sulcus. I then use a collar button to just dial the lens, the trailing haptic, into the sulcus. Place the optic posterior to the anterior capsule leaflets. So the replacement lens is in a nice center position. You have capture of the optic under that anterior capsule leaflet, so it aids in centration and keeping the vitreous back. It's also going to preserve the more normal refraction. Special instruments made by MST Microsurgical. Uh, I just kind of trim one of the haptics. And then I'll use a serrated forcep introduced through the paracentesis port to stabilize the lens. I'll then cut the lens uh, in, in half up to the center of the lens. I'll rotate the lens 180 degrees. I'll cut the other half of the lens, and then we'll take out the lens through the original uh, 2.8 millimeter incision that was made. Having the replacement lens behind the explanted lens is great in the presence of a an intact capsule. These scissors can actually puncture the posterior capsule if the explanted lens is uh, cut prior to inserting the replacement lens. But here, because the replacement lens is already in position, it keeps the vitreous back it maintains the eye pressure a little bit better because the vitreous isn't going to expel through the incision. Uh, we have a more stable chamber. And in the event that the capsule were intact, I would have no risk of inadvertently opening the capsule with the tips of my scissors because the replacement lens would be protecting, serving as a barrier between my scissors and the posterior capsule. With these micro scissors, I find it's hard to cut the entire length of the optic, so I cut a, a half the length or one radius of the end plane, and then I rotate the lens 180 degrees and take out the other, I cut the other radius. I bisect the lens in two stages, and then we just take out each half without having to bite our original incision. At this point, all we have is uh, some vitreous that has presented itself into the incision. I'm going to zoom in. You'll see it. You can actually see the white crystals in the vitreous. Those are calcium crystals of the asteroid hyalosis this patient has. Though calcium
calcium deposition to the posterior surface of the sulconium gland is extremely rare. It has been reported in some cases. I then proceed to do an anterior vitrectomy. I know there's quite a bit of viscoelastic in the eye, so not only do I remove the vitreous and viscoelastic in front of the IOL, I like to kind of go just behind the IOL and pull the viscoelastic that's presenting itself into the anterior chamber. I want to pull it back and remove it. Also, at the same time, I'm taking out some of the asteroid, some of the vitreous, and a lot of the viscoelastic that was, that was, that was placed in the eye to perform the operation. So here I'm behind the eye well, and you can see there's a lot of now that we've gotten rid of all the, visco the um, uh, vitreous from the anterior chamber, we stromal hydrate the incision. And I find that when I'm stromal hydrating that uh, there's still some shallowing of the chamber. So a nice little technique is the Wong incision, named after Richard Wong, who practices in New Jersey. I have no relation. But it's a great little technique where you make a little incision just anterior to your original incision, just a partial thickness little pocket. Here I make it with a little sapphire, maybe about a two millimeter length, half thickness, half corneal thickness incision. And then I just stromal hydrate that pocket with balanced salt solution. It provides a little bit of downward pressure on my incision. Helping to make this patient's incision watertight without the need for a suture. The Wong incision has saved me many times from needing a, a suture. 